What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and today I managed to cram myself into the back of my Gladiator because I want to talk about um, the differences between an auxiliary battery or a dual battery setup like I have in the back of the Gladiator and portable power stations like you see this Jackery 1500 here. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I have done a whole bunch of reviews on power stations. I, I have reviewed everything from little 300 watt uh, power stations all the way up to big 2000 watt hour, really kind of home backup style power stations and have, have used them a lot over the last couple of years. And just recently, a few months ago, I installed this dual battery setup. Okay, actually it's more like a, a quad battery setup because the Gladiator and the JL's uh, Wranglers come with two batteries under the hood. And then I installed two 100 amp hour anti-gravity batteries powered by the Red Arc BCDC 1250. So really, I guess I've got a, a quad battery setup, but installed this a few months ago uh, because of how I'm using the Gladiator now and how I'm uh, types of trips that I'm going on um, installed this. And so I've had some time with this. I've got lots of experience with these. So I wanted to break down the pros and cons of each and help you make the best decision on which one's right for you, depending on your overlanding car camping style. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by the Moore Expo, the Midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And Long Creek Overland, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. As this overlanding car camping thing has grown in popularity, the power needs that we have now have also grown substantially. Um, you know, it is very common for us to be running fridges in the back of our vehicles to keep all of our food cold so we don't have to deal with ice anymore. Um, most of our uh, electronics are rechargeable. Our flashlights, our lamps, the lights and stuff that we use around camp are rechargeable now. Um, of course, batteries for electronics, um, camera batteries, drone batteries, all those sort of things all need to be recharged and need power. We've got things like uh, diesel heaters and 12 volt heated blankets for, you know, for camping in the winter time. We even got air conditioners now that can run off 12 volt power uh, if you're, for, for summer camping and cooking. I mean, gosh, I mean, the ability to take some of our appliances from home, uh, things like blenders for making salsa and sauces and stuff at camp. Back in the fall, we took a crock pot to camp because we, we wanted to have cheese dip and make a big amount of cheese dip because we were camping with a whole bunch of people. And so we took a crock pot and you know, needed to power it. So the amount of things that we sometimes take with us and um, you know, need to power at camp can be substantial nowadays. Now, you know, a lot of this is going to be dependent on your style of camping and overlanding. If you're you know, minimalist and you're just sleeping in a sleeping bag under the stars and eating, you know, freeze dried meals or canned soups and stuff like that, you know, then your power needs may be different than mine. But I say all the time, I go out to thrive, not play survivor. So I want to be able to take a hot shower. I want to, you know, have a nice fan on me in my tent or, you know, or, or a heated blanket with me in my hammock um, and, and keep all of my stuff charged because I like recording all of my trips. So, you know, your power needs may vary, but I think most of us, we, you know, we like to go out and have our creature comforts and there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're going out for a week or two or longer you know, it, you want to have those creature comforts. You don't want to eat, you know, freeze dried meals for, for, for a week. That's, that's no fun. Let's start by talking about the power stations, because I think these are really the easiest way to get into carrying auxiliary power with you on your overlanding car camping trips. It, it's just the simplest way to do it. And they work really well for a lot of people and served me really well for a lot of years and, and still continue to do so because even though I have the, 
um, the dual battery setup. There's still applications for these that I that I use a lot. Um, let's talk about the pros and cons of these. Uh, first of all, I mean, they're very portable and that is the great thing about these. I don't have to have this in my vehicle permanently if I am at camp and need to, you know, take this out of my vehicle and, you know, put it over there on my table or, you know, whatever, hand it off to a friend. The fact that they're so portable makes them excellent. So if you need power in your tent, just carry it over to your tent or up in your rooftop tent, that sort of thing. Or say you change vehicles or you're going out with a buddy. You just grab this and go. You don't have to worry about leaving your your power behind if you've got an auxiliary set up permanently in your rig. You just grab one of these and go. And so the fact that it's portable just makes them fantastic. I think a second key pro to a portable power station like this is just the fact it's an all-in-one solution. I mean, you, you buy it based on the capacity that you need, and it's got your DC port. It's got your AC ports. It's got USB ports. It's got your input ports. And it's just super simple. It's all in one and you, it, it just is what it is and you buy it and you go. So uh, the fact that it's just, I mean, an easy all in one solution is, is definitely a big plus to these. I think another big plus to the power stations is just how little space they take, take up. I mean, this is a 1500 watt hour power station that's fairly compact. I can take this, I can lug it around, I can move it. I think the amount of stuff that they can pack into this space is is really quite incredible. I think another big plus for the power station is, you know, because it's portable, you can use these as, you know, home backup emergency preparedness type things. So if, you know, we have a power outage in my home, the refrigerator in my house goes out, um, I can just grab this and go plug the fridge into it. Um, if, you know, we're in a power outage, but I've got work to do on my, you know, my computer, I can just very easily plug my computer into this and, and go. And if, you know, I need to recharge it, throw some solar panels out in the backyard, that sort of thing. But the fact that this can be used, you know, as a home emergency, um, emergency preparedness type of thing is a huge, is a really big benefit to a power station, especially one of this size and larger. Um, it, it's really good. Now I could feasibly, you know, run my fridge off of my dual batteries here in my gladiator. Uh, I would just need a really long extension cord to, to go from here to, to there. So it's doable, but not near as easily as, as this is. And then finally, price on these things is coming way down, especially when you're talking, you know, sub 1000 watt hours. You know, if you've got, you know, 500 bucks to spend, um, you can get into a, a 500 watt hour power station for that. You can, you know, get up to gosh, 700 watt hours of power, um, for some with, with that budget. Um, you know, once you get into above a thousand watt hours, you know, like this Jackery 1500, it costs 1600 bucks. I can build a comparable dual battery setup with an equal amount, really a little bit more power, um, for that money that, than I can for this. So, um, you know, it really, if you're talking below a thousand watt hours, I think the price of these really justifies going with this over a dual battery setup in your rig. Now let's talk about the cons of the power stations because there's definitely some shortcomings going this route. And I think one of the biggest one is just the, the charging time required to recharge these. If I were to you know, run this down to zero, yeah, it could take eight, nine, ten hours, depending on the power station and, and you know, it's, it's power setup. Um, it can take the better part of a day to recharge it. Most 500 watt power stations are going to come with a 100 watt power brick. So you're talking six -ish hours to recharge those. This one comes with a, I think, a 250 watt power brick. So 1500 watts. Uh, you know, you're talking eight hours to recharge 1500 watts of power. Then you throw solar on there. They 
don't recharge near as fast with solar as they do with AC power. So keeping these things charged is definitely a consideration. Um, I have, we were actually just on this last trip that I was on our high watermark trip video. A friend of mine had a 500 watt power station that uh, it actually had a really good 200 watt charger in it, but the in built in inverter in his Wrangler only had 150 watts capacity. So he would plug in his charger to charge it while we were driving during the day and it would trip it and it wouldn't work. He couldn't charge it. So he was limited to using the, um, the, the 12 volt connection, which is pretty darn slow. And he's, you know, running a fridge, he's running his, his heated blanket at night cause it was really cold. And so keeping it charged was, was a real issue for him. Now, me and the Gladiator, I've got a 400 watt inverter outlet um, behind the front seats in it. So I can charge most of these pretty fast um, in the Gladiator, but not all vehicles have that. So charging is definitely uh, something to consider. And I think one of the cons of a portable power station. And I think the other big con is just the fact that, and it, I mean, it was a plus, but I think it's also a con. This is, this is what you get. And there's been a lot of situations where I've actually taken two power stations with me one this size so that i can run things like my diesel heater plug my fridge in at night so i'm not draining down the starter battery charge all my camera batteries with this and then i'll take a little 300 watt one up into the tent to run the tent lights and to charge my watch and my phone up there there's no way this this jackery 1500 it weighs 60 pounds i don't want to lug this up into the tent and you know take up this much space in my tent Plus I wouldn't be able to, to run my fridge up there very well. So, I mean, sometimes the application is, is you need two of these, a, a big one for your high powered needs and then a small one just to throw up in the tent to, you know, run your tent lights and charge your phones and that sort of stuff. When it comes to auxiliary batteries, like I have installed here, I'll be the first to tell you my setup is overkill. I've got two 100 amp hour batteries from anti-gravity that are fantastic but they provide me if we're talking watt hours like power stations are, are rated off of you're talking 20 over 2500 watt hours of power coming out of these two batteries which is just way overkill for most applications most people will get by i mean you, most people can maybe get by with a 50 amp hour battery but definitely a 100 amp hour battery is gonna take care of most people's needs. Now, mine is powered off of this Red Arc BCDC 1250, which is a beast. It can charge up to 50 amps of power into these batteries. So I've got 200 amp hours of power. If I were to run these down to zero, I could have these recharged in about five hours, which is just crazy fast and i don't ever foresee a situation where i will actually have these run down to zero so far with my current setup my big isco 75 liter fridge just sitting in the garage running full time sometimes i don't move my gladiator for days the least i've seen these down so far is 80 percent, which is i mean there's just so much power in these batteries um, that it's it's fantastic for how I use it. The Red Arc system makes it super simple to set up. And I know this is intimidating uh, for a lot of people, but it really does make it easy because all you have to do, I mean, really is you've got this bundle of wires that come out the back here. All you've got to do is connect three wires. You've got this one that connects to the positive on the battery. You've got one that runs up to the positive terminal on your starter battery that gets the the power from the alternator and then you've got a ground and that's that's really as simple as it could possibly get um, i do have a fourth one wired up that's connected to this anderson connector so that if i want to charge with solar i can do that and it, it, it's just really not a complicated system to set up as it seems so getting into the pros and cons of this type of setup um, the biggest pro to me is just how customizable this type of setup is. So if all I needed to do was run a fridge and make sure my fridge is running with no problem, I could just wire up a 12 volt outlet and boom, 
be done. But I also have a thousand watt pure sign inverter for plugging in, you know, things that need AC power, um, like maybe a hair dryer or the crock pot that I mentioned before, that sort of thing. And, you know, I have the option to adding that. If that thousand watts is not adequate enough down the road, I can pull it out and easily wire in, a, you know, a 2000 watt inverter or a 3000 watt inverter if I have some crazy power needs like that. But I also can, you know, run power up into my tent. This white wire right here, um, it runs a six port USB hub up in my tent. So my lights in my tent, when I'm up there, I'm, you know, charge my watch, my phone, I charge my camera batteries, I can run my laptop off of it. And, you know, I can, I've got USB ports up in my tent. I've got a switch panel down here on the, on the side of the gladiator that runs all my auxiliary lights back here. I've got another 12 volt DC over here on this side that can run, you know, my diesel heater or, you know, some other need that runs off 12 volt. So, and as my needs may grow, I can just add more, more things. If for some reason I needed a second inverter, I could add it or I could add more ports or I can hook more stuff up to it. And so the customizability of this is really, I think what sets this apart and makes this a fantastic system. If for some reason I needed more power than 200 amp hours provides me, I could wire up a third battery in, in parallel here and very simply add more capacity to what I've got. And you cannot do that with a portable power station. It, you just can't do it. And so the, I think that's fantastic. Another key pro, like I mentioned a minute ago, is just how fast I can recharge these. Because it's connected to the alternator, it's run off of, of the Red Arc. The Red Arc makes it so simple to, to keep these topped off and to keep these, these managed. Um, you know, with that Red Arc, I can charge these super fast. And then I've got the same amount of charging. I can hook up if I want to over 650 watts of solar if I'm just, you know, parked at camp for a few days and not going to be starting my engine to recharge these. And if I have the need, I can throw out 600 watts worth of solar panels out there and charge these in four hours. I mean, that's just incredible. Uh, it's just incredible. Now, I don't have 600 watts of solar. I do have 400 watts of solar panels. And so I can throw those out and, and keep this topped up indefinitely. Um, with with this type of setup and it's just makes it super easy and and fantastic you cannot charge a power station that fast a third pro for this i think is you know really the price as you get up in power needs you know say a hundred amp hours or over a thousand watt hours of power that's where an auxiliary battery set up like this with a red arc system really becomes more cost effective than a power station. Typically a power station is going to run you, you know, a dollar a watt hour. So a thousand watt hour power station is typically going to run about a thousand bucks. That's how much the Jackery 1000 is. You can get some for cheaper. Um, but I could build a 100 amp hour, which is what, 1300 watt hours, 1250 watt hours, something like that. Um, well, around 1300 watt hours, I can build a 1300 watt hour, 100 amp hour auxiliary battery setup with the Red Arc BCDC 1225, which is their smallest BCDC charger. And it still charges at 25 amps or over 350 watts of input to your batteries, which is better than any power station I know of. And I can do that for under a thousand bucks. So uh, anything over a thousand watt hours or in this, you know, a hundred amp hours is, I, I think these, this becomes more cost effective. Another pro about this type of setup is really, you just hook it up and, and you kind of forget about it. You just forget that it's there. The red arc's taking care of the charging when you're on the move, or if you plug in solar panels, uh, you, it's just very low maintenance. If you're running a power station, you know, you've constantly got to be monitoring how much capacity you have left. You know, is this enough for the night? Do I need to recharge this somehow? Do I have enough, you know, it, 
Am I going to charge it with solar and have to sit at camp for a while? Am I going to, you know, just run it off 12 volt and charge it very slowly? You know, so with a power station, you got to always be aware of how much power you have and how you're going to charge it and that sort of stuff. But with this, you, you just kind of set it up and, and forget about it. Now, the anti-gravity batteries are fantastic in that they have an app that connects to the to the battery with Bluetooth. And so all I have to do is pull up the app and I can check my state of charge. I can check how much power is going out. I can check how much power is coming in and how much longer it's going to take before these are taught back off charging and they make it super simple. Now these anti-gravity batteries are not cheap by any means. These are definitely high-end batteries and where this battery costs $900, you can, you know, find a, you know, another 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery on Amazon for 300 bucks. Um, but it's not going to have, it, it's not going to be as well designed and have that type of feature that the anti-gravity does. So that's why I chose these. And another big pro to this type of auxiliary battery setup is I'm not just limited to, you know, the things I need to plug in for camping. I can power all the accessories of my rig off of this. I can't do that off a power station. So all of my lights here, my, my, uh, my air compressor, my Midland radio, all of that stuff can be powered with this. I'm actually about to pull all of my forward facing lights, my light bar, my LEDs down front, my rock lights, that sort of thing. I'm about to disconnect that from my starter battery, which is where it is now and rewire those to this. So absolutely nothing is going to be running off my starter battery except my Jeep. None of the auxiliary stuff and accessories are going to be powered off of it. They're all going to be running off of this. I can't do that with a power station. So this gives me a lot more power and flexibility to run all of my accessories off this and protect my starter battery. Now, there are some definite cons to this type of setup. And I think the main one is just the fact that it is a DIY setup. You have to put this together. You have to run the wires. You have to piece out all the parts. You have to choose your parts. And for that, it's intimidating for a lot of people. I will say, you know, I avoided a dual battery setup for years. And when Red Arc came out with their super simple solutions, that made it really easy. So, you know, it's intimidating, but it's really not bad. But just the fact that, you know, you got to know a little bit about how to wire stuff like this up is going to turn some people off. And then really, I think the other main con to this type of setup is the amount of space that it takes up because I mean, these batteries aren't small. You need a place where you can mount them. And that is the biggest thing that changed from when I used to own a Wrangler to me buying the Gladiator is the amount of space that I had. I would never run a setup like this in my Wrangler because I just didn't have the space. Now you may be able to, you know, put a couple smaller 50 amp hour batteries up under the back seat. And I know some people that have done that. Um, but yeah, you're not going to fit a hundred amp hour battery like this easily under the back seat and definitely not going to put one in the back cargo area of a Wrangler because there's not that much space back there already. I don't want to take it up like with, with this back there permanently. So that's where a power station really comes in handy because I can take it out. I can, you know, just throw it in the back seat. If I'm by myself, I can put it in the front seat and keep all my things charging and that sort of stuff. So the flexibility of a power station and you know, the space that it takes up is a lot better than something like this that's going to have to take up dedicated space in your vehicle. Now in my Gladiator, I had this empty space behind my fridge slide. It was a no-brainer where this was going to go because uh, this was basically dead space anyway and it, it fits perfect for this application. So which option is right for you? Well, I think that's uh, really going to be determined on your needs and your, your vehicle. Changing vehicles for me from a Wrangler to the Gladiator was the biggest factor that pushed me from, from going to power stations to an auxiliary battery set up like this. I, I think your rig and your power needs and your style of travel, how long you're going to be out, how you use your camping gear. If like the Gladiator here, I am all tied to this. Like I sleep on top, I cook off the back. 
everything is done in and around the Gladiator. So having the, the auxiliary battery makes the most sense for me. When I was in my Wrangler, I mean, obviously the, the vehicle took me places. I, I did some cooking off the back of it, but I was sleeping in a hammock. Um, I was setting up tables away from the Wrangler for cooking things, that sort of stuff. And so with that vehicle, portable power stations made the most sense. So really it comes down to how you're doing this, this overlanding thing. Uh, you know, are you living completely based out of your rig? Are you away from your vehicle sleeping in a tent? You know, those sort of factors really come into play between choosing which setup is right for you. Well, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this was worth me cramming myself into the back of the Gladiator to make this video happen because I wanted you to be able to see these things and, and talk about them right next to them. Um, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions or, you know, if you have any input to add for, for others to see. You know, tell me about your experiences with both of these, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but I really do want to know. Uh, so leave any questions or, or you know, info you have in the comments. Really appreciate that. If you would like the video, if you found this helpful, you know, hit that like button. It helps YouTube know that uh, this was worthwhile and you know, that, that you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. More hopefully helpful gear reviews and how-tos and that sort of thing. Lots of great trips coming up this year. So hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so that you get notified when those videos come out. And if you, you know, find this type of stuff helpful and you want to contribute back or give back to the channel, uh, check out our Patreon page. It's uh, We really depend on our Patreon supporters. They are the backbone of this channel and allowing us to do the things that we do. And we do not take that lightly. So consider supporting us in a tangible way if you, know, if, if you like this sort of thing. And you also gain access to all of our GPS data, our routes and waypoints and that sort of thing. And some behind the scenes type stuff that we you know, do special uh, for just our patron supporters. And if you're interested in uh, Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, longcreekoverland.com is where you will find that. So anyway, I've had fun doing this. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.